Good day to you viewers, the Colonel speaking to you live from the Grange British Imperial YouTube Broadcasting. Today we're doing famous authors in readings from their own works, the Dominion series of records. This is Dominion B4. Rose Macaulay reads The Beleaguered City, The Lovers, uh, The Alien and The Thief. Here we go. And if you think I've got an odd voice, you should listen to hers. Here we go. The Beleaguered City. Cambridge town is a beleaguered city, a south and north like a sea, a beat on its gates without haste to offer the downs in the pin country. Cambridge towers so old, so wise, they were built but yesterday, watched by pity, grey, secret eyes, the smile of the children's play. Roads south of Cambridge run into the waste, where learning and lamps are lost. And the pale downs tumble, blind chalk face, and the brooding churches spot. Roads north of Cambridge march to a plain, level like the crater sea. It will swallow its ships and turn its smile again, the insatiable pin country. Lest the downs and the pin should eat Cambridge up, and its towers be tossed and thrown. And its rich wine spilt from its broken cup, and its beauty no more known. It has come, you and I, where the roads run blind, out beyond the Thames city. But our love, mingling with earth, may find her imperishable heart of pity. The losers. The soft dust on the by roads is shaken and stirred by the shuffling feet of the listless folk. But no sound is heard. They south along a tired trail with never a song or word. The days they walk the high road with its sun, dust and sweat, its hope and its pride are a dim dream that they will soon forget. All for the fields of slumber, their feet are set. But as they slouch on drowsily, they shall quiet joys find. Boots without heels, jars without gem, and Lord cheese rind. And pilchard skins with one or two fish tails left behind. And glad they are to have left climbing the difficult way. Glad no more to sweat and strive, no more go gay. Yea, all but glad to go was not for such as they. Lost souls they say from Michael's gate turn back in such wise, forgetful of the ecstasy of the strange sweet sky, down poppied paths to the silent glen, who slope with blind eyes. Please wait to take the mutterly for a little space. They must go shambling down the hill to the dim hill place, where such the bees they shall forget they have run and lost the race. The grey dust on the by roads is shuffled and blurred by the dragging feet of beaten men and the quiet sound is heard, a drawing of slow breath as if a thousand sleepers heard. Right on to the other side, please. The alien, lazily wandering through a blind land, as a sailor gropes a strange shore, continually would he stop and stand, his ear through a door. Shadows and girl shapes thronged him about, but he cared no wit for them all. He, all alone in that crazy rout, heard through the wall. As the sea beats on a fog-bound beach, a clamorous whispering broke. And against the shaken door surged the muffled speech of a world of folk. But and if they called him, they were not heard, and he might cry to them in vain. Between them and him, not the least small word would pass again. Only through a crack in the door's blind case, he would reach a seeding hand to draw some clue to his own strange place in the other land. But his closed hand came back emptily as a dream dropped from him who wakes, and not might he know but how muffled seas and whispers break. On either side of a grey barrier, 
the two blind countries lie, but he knew not which held him prisoner, nor yet no eye. The thief, when the paths of dream are mismuffled, and the hours are dim and small, through still nights on wet orchard grass, like rain in the apples fall, then naked footed secretly the thief dropped over the wall. Apple boughs scattered mist of him, the dawn was as cold as death, with the stealthy joy at the heart of it, and the stir of a small sweet dress. And there was a robin breaking his heart on the song as a young child followed it. The thief's feet bruised wet lavender in the sweet sharp surprise. The orchard full of pears and joy smiled like a gold sunrise. But the blind house stared down on him with strange white lidded eyes. He stood at the world's secret heart in the haze wrapped mystery. And fat pears mellow on the lips. He sucked like a honeybee, but the apples he crunched with sharp white teeth are pungent like the sea. And this was the oldest garden joy, living and young and sweet, and the melting mist took radiance in the silence of rhythmic feet, for the day came stealing stealthily a feast upon thirty feet, and the walls that ring this world about quivered like gossamer. Till he heard in the other worlds beyond the other people's stir, and met strange, sudden, shifting eyes to the filmy barrier. Well, they don't speak like that anymore, do they, viewers? And I was only able to get the right speed for this record because a relative of uh, my grandparents actually spoke in after such a fashion. I can do it occasionally too. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, and goodbye. <laughs>